Um, my name is Yeela. I'm an Israeli Jew born in Israel in the Israeli Negev, Nakab. And I work right now for an organization, a Bedouin organization, uh, that is actually the leadership of the residents of the unrecognized villages called the Regional Council for the Unrecognized Villages, or in short, the RCUV. And I will talk a little bit about the unrecognized villages. Um, when you come and visit us, if you come for a full day, and we will try to explain it to you, it will still be very difficult to understand after a full day of explanations how it all works. Um, so we're just going to give it to you, um, Khalid a bit, I'm a little bit, I will do my bit. But if you stay confused, it's okay. Um, another thing I would like, uh, uh, there's a great joke about this, you know, a person from a farm that came to the city and he went to see the zoo and he walked around and saw the lions and the bears and whatever, the cougars, and he gets to the giraffe cage and he looks at the giraffe and he looks and he looks and he looks and he says, mm, there ain't such an animal. So, if after you see what we have to show you, if you come to the conclusion that there ain't such an animal, I understand. <laughs> what you see here, uh, it's what I would like is not just that you will be knowledgeable, but also that you will be moved to try and help and support. So, first of all, thank you for coming here to listen, and I hope that you will also have the energy to do more than this. And what you see in front of you is a mosque, and we're sitting in this beautiful church. And this is what the people of the unrecognized villages may build. It actually is an Amai's village in Wanya. Just a bit of information. Right now, there are seven million and some citizens, Arab, uh, citizens of Israel. Of them, about 20% are Arab. We have a very large Arab minority. Within the Arab minority, we have a, a small Bedouin minority. So there are 10% of the Arabs, only 160,000 Bedouins, 170, 180, um, that live all in the desert, in the Israeli Negev, which is the bottom part of Israel, the southern part, the desert part of Israel. And of them, just over 50% live in these unrecognized villages. And this is an overview of Khalil's village. It's called a Syria. To be unrecognized, as Khalil said, it means no water, no roads, no connection to the electric grid, no sewer system, no trash removal, no municipal representation. So if Khalil has any trouble with the government, well, just tough luck. Um, there are some very minimal schools, very minimal medical services. And the worst part, as we saw with the demolition, is the fact that there is no way, no place we can get a building permit. And if you can see in small, over here, okay, that's a bulldozer just, just finished a Monashita home. This is a different village called Imun Khiyam. By the way, they want to erase this village because they want to put a nice Jewish town instead. Some history, how did we get to this situation? Before Israel became a state, in 1947, we had about 70,000 Bedouins living in the Israeli desert. Um, the number is very, it depends who's talking, if an Arab is talking, it's 90,000, if it's an Israeli Zionist talking, it's 50,000, so I took the middle number. <laughs> By 1949, we only have 11,000. So the rest, you can call them fled, or you can tell them, say that they were chased out, someone put on trucks to move out, moved out, but the fact is, by the end of the war, from fear, from being told to leave, we only have 11,000 Bedouins left inside of Israel, and they became citizens of Israel immediately. They swore allegiance to the state, um, they swore to keep the, the borders safe, and in return, our minister, our prime minister, the first prime minister, Ben Gurion, swore to let them stay with their lands and their traditions. But the government broke its promise very early on. In the 1950s, they concentrated the Bedouins into a siyad, which is very much the same as a reservation. It actually has the word of it. Siyad in Hebrew means the boarded off area. And were put under uh, military rule. 1996 was the end of the military rule, 1960, 1966. In 1965, Israel established the a law called the planning and construction. Also, we can, you know, organize our country and people uh, will not go build whenever they feel like. 
But the problem with that law was that it did not realize, quote unquote, that there were Bedouins living in the Negev. And that is how, since then, the government has not found a way, quote unquote, has chosen not to find a way in which to allow a system to allow building permits and planning for the Bedouin residents and the Negev citizens of Israel. 1969, the first Bedouin town was established. It's all a process of concentration. So the first part was to try and get as many Bedouins out of Israel. Early 1950s, they concentrated into reservation area, about a tenth of the Negev, and then concentrated into towns. So in 1969, the first town, and till the mid-1990s, we had seven towns established. And if you think of Bedouin and you think of town, you can see those don't work well together. Um, in 2005, also thanks to work with Khalil and other leaders and the organization that I work with, we managed to um, start a political process that the government did indeed recognize some of the villages and they put them under a governmentally appointed regional council called Abu Basma. So of 45 unrecognized villages, um, about 11 um, we have nine in the process, keep some changing depending on what day we're talking. Um, there's about somewhere between 11 and 13 now which are in a process of recognition. But even these villages, um, it's come to a standstill. And it, as I said, it's very complicated. I will not go into the details. Please come and visit. This is a map um, that we see on the left hand corner is the Mediterranean Sea, right hand corner you see the Dead Sea. And if we could go further down the map, we would get to Eilat. And you can see a small triangle. Here. That is the Siag area, the reservation area. You can see some blue dots inside that Siag. Those are the unrecognized villages. We have unrecognized villages of two types. One, like Khalil's village, is a village that was there before 1948. The other, like Amal's village, is a village that was created by trans moving people from one location to another. So Amal's village, Wadi Naam, was created by moving people from the west side of the road to the east side of the road. So Khalil is sitting on his ancestral lands. Amal is actually uh, a people who are internally displaced. The 45 villages are of those two types. The core of the issue between Israel, the government of Israel, and its Bedouin minority is about land. In 1948, when the, uh, even before 1948, when the Jews started to come and settle Israel, the idea of the most important part, one of the most important things, was to redeem land. And uh, the word redemption is very, very religious. It has a lot of uh, religious connotations. And even for a secular Israeli, uh, the idea of redeeming land is very important. And so um, what we're doing is we're having a battle with the indigenous people inside Israel and also in the West Bank. It's very similar, these things across the border with the citizens and the Palestinians. Those settlements are the same idea. The idea of redeeming land, the idea of making land Jewish. And so we need to take all the Bedouin land and make it Jewish. Um, and so Bedouins held, I mean, they had land ownership. Like Khalil said, he actually bought, his great-grandfather bought that land from another Bedouin who also owned the land. But the Israeli court systems do not accept the Bedouin court system of land ownership. Israel says, hey, before us there were the British, before them there were, there were the Ottomans. All these people had land registration systems. How come you didn't register with them? And so Israel is utilizing the fact that it's there were colonial powers before us in order to say, eh, if you didn't register it then, we don't see how come it's yours now. But there are historical land holdings according to Bedouin laws. They were not registered historically in Ottoman land registry. In 1969, Israel started the process of registration but stopped it immediately because we really didn't believe that they had land. And so what we thought is, you know, they will all say it's the land is theirs, like he will say it's his, and he'll say it's on top of it, and any double claiming turns automatically to Israeli land, to the government land. But there was no double claiming because they did have their land ownership system. 